I'm Mitch Weiss, and I, among other things, teach a course on public entrepreneurship in the second year MBA program at Harvard Business School. It's a course about invention inside government and by private gov tech, mainly companies for government. One of the riddles, great riddles we had for us this semester was to what extent will generative AI be useful in helping solve public problems? That was a riddle I put to the students that we would wrestle with for the duration of the course. And at one point in the early part of the course, we wrestle also with the question of where does do government officials and where do gov tech entrepreneurs go for new ideas? And this seemed like a very right moment to say, well, could the officials and the entrepreneurs go to generative AI for help with ideas? So I created an exercise that I now called Storoad and it was motivated by about two minutes of video which I will share a short snip of. It's video about a very particular problem that we have in Boston, which is overheight trucks hitting themselves on our local Storo Drive. And this video essentially served as the prompt for the students. Okay, now we have a problem. Now we're going to use generative AI to try to help us first understand this problem and uh, secondly, actually try to arrive at ideas for the problem. And... Um, so students had access to the Harvard Sandbox to, to use for prompting. I'll show you in a second about a few of the things they did with that. But I woke up uh, the morning of class wanting to raise the stakes. We were going to go into class, use the tools, but how do I create some tension, some energy, some urgency, some expectation? So in addition to showing them the video, I also created a, a game. I asked ChatGBT to write in HTML a game where you'd have two trucks they were heading towards a bridge and they would hit the bridge in 30 minutes unless I uh, clicked a button that would send the trucks back 10 seconds, which you can see I can do here. And what I did in class was uh, I split the room in two. Half the class were people who wanted to be public officials. Half the class were people who wanted to be GovTech entrepreneurs. And I said to them, if your group uh, makes a good prompt, then I will move your truck back. Uh, and we had a lot of fun with it because who knows what's a good prompt and um, how many clicks, but it, it added a wonderful level of excitement and interest and tension to the class. By the way, when someone found the other team uh, buying some AI hallucination, we moved their truck closer and it added a whole lot of energy into class. In any event, uh, just uh, as we get towards wrapping up, we use the Harvard AI tool in order to, as I said, do a couple of things, problem understanding, ideation. And so you can see here, you know, we can ask, um, you know, why does storing happen in Boston? And um, and if a student had suggested that prompt, which they did, uh, they'll get an answer. And so I would have given them probably one click back of 10 seconds. But if students had more creative prompts, for example, um, can you uh, do a five whys analysis on why storing happens in Boston? Uh, which is a tool they learn in their operations courses here. Now they've asked GPT to help them apply it. Then I would have given them several more clicks. Uh, as well, uh, when we got to ideation, you know, uh, can you give me ideas for solving storing? You know, please, please give me 10 or five. You know, I would have given the students, you know, a nice click. Here's 10 seconds you can have. But if students said something like, in the spirit of brainstorming, name five really bad ideas for solving storing, and then name five good ones that come from it, I would have given the students considerably more points. Again, here, they're taking something they've learned in their design thinking classes or their innovation courses, their entrepreneurship courses, and applying it to, um, to, the, to the work here. I learned a couple of things putting that into class. I would say the first of it has to do with this game I created, that uh, it is nice to add stakes to all this in class, and that you can, as a non-software you know, software engineer, actually now build simulations or exercises using these tools uh, relatively quickly, uh, lesson number one. Uh, you know, uh, and number two is the students didn't arrive in class with a very sophisticated sense of the kinds of prompts they could use, but they left class with them because they got them from each other and to some extent from their professor. And we should not imagine, on the one hand, that students just know how to use these tools uh, impeccably and inventively, but we should feel confident that together they can help each other uh, elevate their, uh, their skill set on this front.